Hello, welcome to the Marin County Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. We have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Just note that if your question is for one specific school, please name the school in your question so they know it's for them. Your cameras or microphones are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So just sit back, relax, and listen to this great information being presented over the next 45 minutes. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you signed up for this one. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week at the same website where you registered for this session. We're in session C7. It is on the center left bottom part of the uh, screen that I'm sharing. So session C7, I'll actually move my cursor over it just a little bit, even though it brings up that menu. That is the order of the presentation tonight from each of the, our representatives in this session. So I've gotten all the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I will step out of the way. And I'll turn it over to our first presentation from the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. Awesome. Hello, everybody. My name is Keely Mattel, and I'm the regional representative here in California for University of Minnesota Twin Cities. So the University of Minnesota has over 150 majors to choose from, as well as over 130 different minors. One of the great things about being a large university like ourselves is there are just so many options for you to tailor your education, really find what you're interested in, what you're passionate about, and ways to marry that into what you are overall studying. So for instance, if you wanna be an engineering major, but you're interested in yoga or you're interested in cooking, you can absolutely take a class for that. All of our programs are geared to being four-year programs. So I will repeat, there are no impacted majors at the university. You are guaranteed a spot into your program from the start of it. Um, and you will be guaranteed spots in that program as well. We have eight freshmen admitting colleges. So when you do apply to the U, you do have to apply into a college to get admitted. These colleges range from College of Science and Engineering, our College of Design, Carlson School of Management, Nursing, and so on. For nursing, it is a direct entry freshman admitting only, so you do have to apply as a first year student for that. But other than that, you do have to apply into one of these colleges. You can still be undecided as a major in these colleges. However, um, you do still have to get admitted into a college to get admitted at the U. We don't have what we would say like an overall undecided program. Our location, if not all any of you are familiar with us, we are located in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul in Minnesota, two side-by-side -side cities, hence the name Twin Cities. Great location. I believe that's one of our biggest selling points. St. Paul is the capital. Minneapolis is a major hub for tech and industry. There are 14 Fortune 500 companies headquartered there. Target is one of them, which I know you're all familiar with, as well as 3M. So great partnerships, a lot of opportunity for internships right in your backyard. Target and 3M are also two big names that help fund our university for programs. So there's a lot of funneling when it comes to research opportunities, those mentorships, as well as those job opportunities. We hold the largest career fair at the U every year, twice a year. So if you're interested in those internships, co-ops, or even a job after graduation, we have people from all over the country and even all over the world there. So you're not just limited to this great location of Minneapolis. We also have a strong living alumni network. We're about 550,000 of us strong. And I think that's huge when you're thinking of graduating from college and what you're doing after that. Um, here in the Bay Area, we do have a large Golden Gopher chapter. So it's so nice to think about when, you know, you're moving to a new location, you're looking for a new job, that you have that sense of family everywhere you go. The area is also a huge hub for arts, music, culture, theater. We have the second largest Broadway seat in the country. There's student discounted tickets. There's every single major league uh, sports team there, as well as we are division one NCAA sports teams on campus. So there's so much to access. That's literally a light rail ride away. As you can see on the map here, I kind of drew some big name cities. Minneapolis is super easy to get to. It's a direct flight from San Francisco. Sometimes I fly out of Oakland or San Jose even, and it's about three and a half hours. You get to the airport. Once you're at the airport, you jump on the light rail. It will take you right to campus. You can get on the light rail and go downtown Minneapolis. You can go to St. Paul. You can go to Mall of America if you want to go shopping, and then you go back to the airport. 
super user friendly and easy accessible city to get around. You're not like looking up at skyscrapers when you're going to class, you're looking out at them. So you really get the best of both worlds. Minneapolis downtown itself is about two miles away from campus. So you do have this big collegiate campus and you really get that small campus feel as well as have a whole city to utilize. We're ranked one of the most walkable cities in the country as well as one of the most biker friendly. So again, when I say easily accessible, it is extremely accessible to get around. So our application is available now. It's on the Common app and our Golden Gopher app, which is on our website. All you need is your app fee of $55 unless you have a fee waiver and then your self-reported academic record. We don't need any transcripts and we are also test optional this year. So we don't need an SAT or ACT score either unless you were lucky enough to find a test date and get a score and you wanna use that for your application, then you absolutely can send that to us as well. And we will use that. We do a very holistic review process. So there's a lot of different areas we look at. It's not just you know grades, GPA. We look at the overall student based on your high school and your high school alone. Primary factors are, of course, going to be what kind of classes you were taking, were you challenging yourself, what kind of grades you were getting, as well as if you do have those test scores, we'll use those. And then there is an optional essay, which I highly encourage, don't use it as optional, think of it as mandatory. And it's a space where you can really fill out anything about yourself that your application doesn't already tell us. It's a great way to advocate yourself for admissions at the university. We have three deadlines, which I haven't updated yet. Our first one is early action, which is November 1st. If you are a nursing major, then that is a hard deadline. So um, you will need to have it in by then. And then we have December 1st, which is our second early action, new deadline that we just added. Then our regular deadline, which is January 1st. None of these are binding. It's not like early decision. So keep that in mind. It's just getting a decision sooner. You're guaranteed a decision either by January, February, or March in that order. Great way to think about if you're applying to other colleges and university, it can keep you organized to get that admissions decision sooner rather than later. However, again, there's no disadvantage of applying earlier than later either. Same goes with scholarships. We do merit-based scholarships at the university. So that one application is an application for scholarships, your chance of getting in at the U as well as our honors program. But that's all I have for you guys today. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and I will go on to the next person. Thank you very much. And I wanna remind everyone, both of the order of presentations for this uh, session, but also to use the Q&A if you have questions for any of our presenters this evening. Next up, we'll hear from the representative from the University of Illinois, Chicago. All right, so my name, my name is Nita. Thank you so much for your time. So I have my presentation up and I'm kind of just gonna run through. I wanted to give you guys some color tonight since it might've been a long day. UIC, as we call it, is about 200 acres. As you can see, there are beaches, downtown area, internships galore, but we're about 200 acres here. Um, moving on, we, my name is Nita again, and I'm the West Coast rep. So let me try to get this going. Bear with me one second. So we're kind of just briefly going to discuss admissions, paying for college, Q&A. And I want you guys to remember, you don't have to know it all. If you don't know your major, we have about 100 majors, 70 minors. It is quite okay. This is the way to reach me directly, admissions at uic.edu. So we are located in the West Loop, about three blocks away from the United Center near Google's headquarters, McDonald's headquarters. And we're about five minutes away from internship city galore with the Loop area. You don't really need a car. We have two major airports, so you can get home back to Cali in about three and a half, four hours. And we have tons of concerts, um, et cetera, right in the area. So this is kind of just a map so you can kind of see the fun that's open to you from the lakefront to Navy Pier, et cetera. So Chicago is an amazing city. If you do live in our dorms, which I'll go over, you get free laundry and students can also get what's called a U-Pass so that you get a train and bus to take you all over this amazing city. So moving on, 100 majors, 70 minors. We are NCAA, but no football. Our top majors coming from the West Coast specifically are nursing, pre-med, pre-law, architecture, theater, STEM, psych, business, education, but we have about 100 majors, so you're very open to be able to mix and match. Passionate Midwestern values, um, rankings high in for several different majors, but USC has about 400 student clubs, and we're really known for being a research-based university. 
This is some of the fun you can have. Um, we have eight dorms. This is one of our amazing newer dorms called the ARC. Um, our honors business students actually manage the Starbucks inside of it. But again, free laundry is free laundry. So that's an amazing perk. Diversity is so diverse at USC that we don't actually have numbers. Um, these are some of our rankings from LGBTQ premier campus to 31% first generation. We have a lot of out of state international students. So we're really big on making sure that you feel welcome. We're all about social good, great cities, student engagement. So no matter, no matter what major you are, you do have a good opportunity to volunteer. These are some of the other um, top values that we got for Wall Street Journal and other magazines and reports. So we're pretty proud of that. We are huge on research. So we have a research grant, even if you're not a science-based major for $2,500 that students can do. We have over 400 million in sponsored research. Um, students apply through the Common App we need your um, standardized test scores, official transcripts, app fee or waiver. And then these are some of the kind of the things that we look for. And again, like most colleges, we're more so about being holistic. These are kind of some of the common app prompts. And I just really will tell you to go after your strong suit since you can't really come to a campus, see people really choose a common app essay that is you so that your genuine nature comes through um, the application. So these are some of our major decisions. We have a regular decision, early action. We don't have a fee or deposit fee or anything like that. So if you are interested in applying, I would say do it as early as possible. Um, if you are transferring in, we utilize transferology to help you. And then as far as paying for college, a lot of my students, these are kind of the tuition and fees and the fees on the right are kind of just estimates. But a lot of students find that the merit scholarship that USC offers makes tuition a little more comparable to what they will pay in state, even in California for school. So being public, we try not to make it super expensive. This is our school code. These are some of our major scholarships. But again, the major scholarship for out of state is probably the merit one. We offer need-based financial aid, merit-based scholarships. So sometimes, you know, let's say you're a biochem major, your department may just pick you and say, you know what, this sounds like a great future researcher. We're going to pick this student for um, a scholarship. So that's kind of how financial aid works. And we can go deeper into that if you contact me. So overall, the best way to discover us right now is discover.usc.edu. You can reach me directly at admissions at usc.edu. And I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. And thank you. Want to again remind everyone of the schools presenting it during this session and remind everyone to use the Q&A for questions of any of our representatives this evening. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from the University of Utah. Good evening, Jasmine Bryan from the University of Utah. We are a public flagship tier one research university located in beautiful Salt Lake City. If you haven't heard of the term tier one, it means we have the highest level of research on our campus. Across the United States, there are only about 130 universities with tier one status. In California, it's our UCs that are tier one. We have about 24,000 undergraduate students and our average class size is 23, so you'll get to know your professors well. We're very proud to be one of the 65 members of the Association of American Universities, where members must be on the leading edge of innovation and scholarship. If you Google the list, you'll see we're in great companies. Stanford, Harvard, and MIT are also members. Our location is amazing. We really have the best of both worlds. We are within 45 minutes of seven world-class ski resorts. We hosted the Olympics in Salt Lake. We're also a half day's drive from five national monuments, just 10 minutes from downtown Salt Lake City, where students can watch a jazz game, that's our professional basketball team, grab dinner or work an internship. Salt Lake City has been voted one of the top 10 pro-business cities in the US. So many of our students will work an internship and then catch the light rail for free and be back on our beautiful campus in just 10 minutes. We offer over 150 different majors. We have our own medical school, law school, school of engineering, business, architecture, direct entry, nursing, film, lots of many programs. Wish I could tell you about them all. I'm gonna highlight just a few. Our David Eccles School of Business offers nine undergraduate majors. Not sure which one is right for you? No problem, start with business scholars. Business scholars allows you to try all the areas of business before selecting the one on which you'd like to focus. 
We also have a student investment fund where students manage a $700,000 portfolio and gain invaluable experience. If you're interested in gaming, the you should be on your list. Our gaming major has been ranked number one by Princeton Review, and we've published 99 games so far. Cutting Edge Research is the name of the game in our engineering department. We have 26 research centers at the U. Our freshman engineering scholars program allows first year students to tour the research facilities in the fall and experience weekly instruction in these same labs in the spring. The Milken Institute ranked the U the number one in the transfer of technology to commercialization. Our competition, Stanford, Caltech, MIT, why did we do so well? We're all about putting innovation into action as can be seen in the picture of the Luke arm. Named after Luke Skywalker, it's a prosthetic arm that can not only move, but feel. So we can tell the difference of picking up a rock or an egg, for example. Lassonde. Lassonde is all about creating your own company. We've launched 35 companies in the last two years. At Lassonde, you'll find a 20,000 square foot innovation space. We hold monthly get seated programs that let students learn how to pitch their idea for funding. One Lassonde startup, Boundary Backpacks, took what they learned and were able, they were able to raise over $1 million to launch their company. You can live at Lassonde as well in themed living spaces. Now, not everyone wants to start their own company, but many students are interested in having an internship. Through our Hinckley Institute, students from all natures can have local, national, and global internship. As the U is located in our state's capital, Salt Lake City, our state legislature is just 10 minutes from campus. So we've had many students intern for the state legislature. Through Capital Encounters, students can work a paid internship in Washington, DC. That includes a subsidy for housing. And yes, we have study abroad. We're affiliated with over 600 different programs, but we also allow students to intern abroad. We've had students intern in over 50 countries and we regularly have students interns in Australia and Jordan. Not sure about your major? No problem. We offer a major exploration class that starts with a self-assessment and then allows you to learn all about the different majors offered at the U. With our LEAP program, students take a class in the fall and the spring with the same group of students and the same professor, and able to build a smaller community within the university. Another option is LEAP Global. You take classes in Salt Lake City in the fall, and in the spring, you take classes on our campus in South Korea. Our Student Life Center includes one of the largest outdoor adventure programs in the country. Students can rent any equipment they need for their next adventure or sign up for a guided rafting, backpacking, or climbing trip. And yes, we have plenty of skiing and snowboarding equipment available for students. We sell lift tickets and there's a bus you can catch that will take you right on up to the slopes. We are a proud member of the Pac-12. Our must or mighty Utah student section has a tradition called the third down jump. When our opponents are facing third down, our students jump in unison. It creates a seismic event, which has been picked up by engineering a mile away. We are a common app school and we utilize holistic review, giving primary importance to the rigor of your coursework and your grades in those courses. We will be test optional for this fall and for fall 2022. The WUI, the Western Undergraduate Exchange, allows students to receive a discount on the out-of-state tuition. WUI scholars pay one and a half times the in-state tuition, saving over 16,000 a year. WUI is guaranteed for all students from WUI states admitted with a 3.0 and above. Here you can see our in-state tuition is about 9,000, out-of-state is about 30. That will be rate is just 14,000 a year and students can receive scholarships and financial aid in addition. Here is my contact information. I am based full-time in the Bay Area. I live in Alameda and I welcome your questions. Thank you very much. And if you have questions for Jasmine or for any of our other reps presenting this evening, make sure to use the Q&A button to ask your question. And if it is for a specific school, Please make sure you name the school in your question so they know it is for them. Up next, we will hear from the representative from the University of Montana Western. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chrissy Stokes and I'm an admissions representative here at the University of Montana Western. I um, 
Just to share a little bit about Montana Western, we are a small public university located in Dillon, Montana, which is in the southwestern corner of the state down here. Um, the school itself is pretty small. We only have about 1,200 students, and the, um, the town of Dillon also only has less than 5,000 people living in the community. Um, we are just minutes away from outdoor activities, including hiking, biking, hunting, fishing, skiing, and snowboarding. We have a number of ski hills around Dillon, um, with Maverick Mountain only being about 45 minutes away from campus. We also have a lot of activities going on on campus for our students. We have a lot of clubs and organizations that students can participate in, as well as seven collegiate athletic programs. We have men's and women's basketball, volleyball, football, cross country, track, rodeo, and cheer. We have quite a few majors and minors available at Montana Western. Um, none of our programs are impacted and our students do not have any issues getting into the classes they need to take when they need to take them. Some of our top majors include education, biology, and business. Montana Western has the best education program in the state offering degrees in early childhood, elementary, and secondary education. Our biology program has seen great success in preparing our students for medical and veterinary schools after they complete their four-year program here at Montana Western. And we're offering two new programs in our business administration degree. We have one in farm and ranch operations and the other in outdoor guide and wildlife outfitters enterprise management. One thing that sets us apart from other schools is how we run our classes. So Montana Western is very unique as we are the only four-year public institution in the nation that runs on a block schedule that we call Experience One or X1 for short. So this is how it works. Um, it's actually pretty simple to comprehend. We, um, our students, instead of taking four or five classes all at once, they get to take four classes each semester, but they focus on each cl class one at a time. So they are in one course for three and a half weeks or 18 school days, and they're only in class for three hours a day. So this gives our students the opportunity to um, still graduate within four years, but they don't have to worry about um, juggling everything all at once. So comparing our program to a traditional semester, our students um, have the same schedule every day for at least three and a half weeks. So they either have a morning class from eight to 11 or an afternoon class from 12 to three. They don't have to worry about different schedules, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays versus Tuesdays and Thursdays. They don't have random night classes or anything like that. So it's, very, it's a very simple process. They work on one subject only, they're working with one professor, and the best part is, is they only have to take one final at a time. So now looking at the freshman application process, um, it's pretty simple. Our students just have to um, complete an application. Um, we have an online application that maybe only takes 15 to 20 minutes to fill out. There is a $30 non-refundable application fee that goes with that. And then we have our students fill out what's called our high school self-report form, which is just our placeholder for the final high school transcript until after you graduate. Now I have on here official ACT or SAT scores, but that is is not required for this fall 2021 semester. Um, we have gone test optional, but you can still send those in, which can help you out when it comes to scholarships. Last thing we need is proof of two doses of the MMR immunization. Now looking at the cost of attendance, Montana Western is pretty affordable. Um, we are also a part of the WUI program, which um, as they said before, is just 150% of in-state tuition. Normally our non-resident students will pay about $25,000 a year for tuition fees and room and board. If you are from a participating state and you graduate from high school with a 3.0 cumulative GPA or higher, your tuition will drop from almost 16,000 a year down to less than 6,800 a year, making your total cost just over 15,000. So um, it is an affordable option. Our WUI scholarship can be renewed up to 12 semesters and um, you can actually stack additional scholarships on top of that as well. Some more ways that we can help students pay for school is by um, they can 
apply for the FAFSA, which that opened on October 1st. Our priority deadline is December 1st. And then we also have additional scholarships that students can apply to as well. All it takes is um, one student, or the students just have to fill out one online scholarship application by January 15th. And that means that they are put in for all of the scholarships that we have available. Instead of you having to go through and find the scholarships that you qualify for, we're gonna do that work for you. So the only thing you have to do in order to qualify for scholarships is just get your admissions application turned in first and then um, fill out your scholarship application. We are very lucky in the fact that we can have students come to campus. Um, so if you are able to travel to uh, Dillon, Montana and you wanna come and see campus, let us know. You can apply on or you can sign up online or you can call us as well here in the admissions office. We give tours uh, weekdays, 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. But we also know that sometimes it's pretty difficult, especially these days, to um, be able to make these trips. So we are also available for phone or Zoom meetings as well if you'd like to get more information about the school. This is my contact information. I'd be happy to help um, with you with any questions you might have. If you want more information about programs, if you want more information about um, about the school itself, um, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And again, if you have questions for Chrissy or any of our presenters this evening, please make sure to uh, use the Q&A button to ask those questions. And if it's for a specific school, name the school in your question. Up next, we'll hear from the representative from Loyola University, Chicago. I'm unmuted now. Hello, I'm Emily from Loyola Chicago, and um, I'm here just to give you a real quick introduction to the school. So uh, we are a very diverse school located in Chicago. Uh, we're a really nice size, I think, just over 12,000 undergraduate students. So it means that it feels bigger than your high school, but it's not, you're not going to get, um, you have really small class sizes and you still get a really individualized, uh, really individualized attention. So here's a, a few of our stats that you can see there um, about our di diversity, but uh, we attract students who want a city. We are in a great city in Chicago and we also attract students who are really um, wanting to do community service and get involved in service learning. We are one of 27 Jesuit universities in the United States and the thing I'd really like for you to take away today about a Jesuit university is that everybody is welcome here. So we have a significant population of Catholic students but we also have a lot of students from other uh, religious faith backgrounds and from non-faith backgrounds um, and a lot of students coming from a lot of different areas around the country and around the world. Um, these are our various campuses. We actually have two campus is, campuses located in Chicago, our Lakeshore campus and our Water Tower campus. Our Lakeshore campus, as you can see, is right on the beautiful shores of Lake Michigan there. Um, so it's really unique because you're in the heart of Chicago, but you do have that traditional campus feel. So that definitely attracts students who are, are looking to be in a big city, but they want to feel that like they're on a campus. A number of our programs are also uh, located downtown at a much more urban setting. Our, our water tower campus. We have six high rise buildings spread across three city blocks. And our students love having both of these options where they can come in the morning and, and you know, wake up in the morning with their lakeside view and then take our shuttle uh, across town about 35 minutes to our water tower campus. We do have a train stop right at our Loyola camp, at our Lakeshore campus, the Loyola stop. All students do have a U pass, so it's really easy to get around uh, the city and explore the city um, and very easy to get between the campuses either on our shuttle or on a bus or on a train. The one thing I love to share about our, our shuttle is it's actually powered by our French fry grease. We're one of the few schools that makes biodiesel fuel and that biodiesel fuel is made from the cafeteria grease that we collect from three of our uh, the three of our cafeterias and then we use that to power the shuttles uh, that, that goes back and forth between our campuses and then the byproduct of that is made into soap that you're going to find on uh, in all of our restrooms. So I think it's really unique. You can eat French fries at Loyola Chicago and know you're powering our shuttle and keeping our hands clean. So it's pretty unique. Um, Chicago, as I mentioned, a great place to be a student. There's just so much that it offers. So we've got this amazing, very uh, warm and and uh, um, warm and collaborative campus. But then when you grow out of that campus, you just have this a really great city to grow into. So these are a few things about the city, but you know everything that you 
want to find is there. But the cool thing about it, I think, is there's also a lot of green space. So I'm a person that likes a city, but I also like to have green areas. And that's one of the reasons I really love Chicago. These are our eight schools that are open to undergraduate students. You can come in as an undecided student. Many students do. Um, and we are going to help you figure out where, you know, what major is right for you. Um, and these are all of the different schools that you can grow into over 80 different majors, 80 different minors. We're a great school if you want to study STEM, but not give up theater. If you play the violin, but you also want to study psychology, you can do it all at Loyola Chicago. Um, and there's just so much that you can explore. Uh, one of the programs I always like to highlight is that we have a forensic science program. It's just not that, that well known. Uh, you know, a lot of schools don't have that. So we do have a really awesome forensic science program. We also have a direct entry nursing program. So you can get a nursing degree in four years. And we have the number one business program for undergraduate students in Chicago. So that's really unique. You can come in actually as an undecided business student, choose your major at the by the end of your second year um, and still finish up in four years. Um, so we really do offer a lot for our students. We've got tons of student clubs and organizations and clubs uh, and, and um, intramural and club sports. So you don't have to give up anything that you love. You can come and grow into it and expand that uh, what you do. Uh, one of the big things about being a Jesuit un university is that we believe your experience outside of the classroom is just as important as your experience in the classroom. So we do provide a really robust campus experience for you. Um, we take care of your mind, your body, and your spirit. We believe all of those need to be taken care of in order for you to really thrive. Um, so we're really, you're going to find a lot of opportunities for you to be involved. And as I mentioned already, uh, social justice is really a big part of who we are. So not only are you going to see that in what we offer, but you're also going to find a lot of other students who are attracted by that. So it makes just a really cool, cool community. Um, our application, we are on the Common App. It's always been free to apply to Loyola Chicago. Um, and we're really similar to the other great schools that are here tonight presenting. Um, we are test optional this year. Um, we recommend that you submit an essay, but it is also optional. Um, you know, this year without SATs, AT, ACTs, your other stuff is just that much more important. We do a holistic review. We're going to read through everything that you submit. So we really um, encourage you to, you know, just be really thoughtful about, about what you're submitting this year because we've got less data points. Normally we have ACT or SATs, but going forward, um, we won't. And we have an upcoming open house. We've got two dates actually this coming Saturday. So if any of this resonates with you, I really recommend to sign up for the uh, um, open house where we're going to do these awesome little sessions that are a lot more pointed. I cannot nearly tell you enough in these six minutes, but you can definitely find out at our open house. We also have daily presentations Monday through but Saturday, we offer a live presentation along with a student panel. So one of the things I really recommend is try to get the student perspective. So whatever school you're interested in, find out how you can hear from current students. And you can do that every day through our presentations or at open houses. Back to you, Russ. Thank you very much. And again, I want to remind everyone that if you have questions for uh, any of our presenters, this evening, make sure that you use the Q&A button to, you, to ask that question. And if it's for a specific school, make sure you name the school in your question. Our next presentation will be from Rocky Mountain College. One more time, good evening, everyone. Appreciate you guys uh, taking time out of your day to join us. <clears throat> My name is Sean Coleman, Director of Admissions here at Rocky Mountain College. Today, I'm gonna give you guys a little review about Rocky Mountain College here in Billings, Montana. So a little bit about Rocky Mountain College. We are the oldest institution in the state of Montana. We're located in central Southern Montana. So it's the largest city here in the state. So we offer all the amenities uh, that students would need as they're attending college and growing in both their professional and personal lives. We're grounded in liberal arts, which means that students will not only take uh, classes in, say, our aviation program, where they're going to be flying a plane every three days, or in our equestrian center, where they're going to be riding a horse every day, but they're also going to take math and science and English and help develop you as a person and as a student. Because uh, as we all know, people will change jobs throughout their careers, and our job is to make you a great person uh, when you graduate, not only at your, your identified major, but also just as a, as a general person in society. 
a diverse student body. So we have uh, just about 1,000 students. So we're a small school, so we're going to be able to give you the, the personal attention that you deserve and that, quite frankly, you're paying for. Uh, students come from nearly all 50 states and about 20 different countries. So students are, are, are seeking out Rocky Mount College for a very specific reason, and we're able to offer that to them. We are affiliated with three different denominations, uh, so Church of Christ, United Methodist, and Presbyterian. Students are able to get as involved with that as they'd like. It's completely up to them, but there is no requirement for students to be involved with either of those denominations. And we are accredited uh, by the Northwest Commission. As I mentioned, Rocky Mountain College is located in uh, what we call the, the banana belt, if you will, of Montana here uh, in Billings. It's the largest city, about 125,000, uh, which again, uh, might not be saying much from uh, the, the northern part of, of California there, but we offer everything that you would need. We offer one of the busiest airports in the state of Montana. So uh, quite often you can fly directly. If you're flying into Montana, you're flying into Billings. The airport's about five minutes down a hill uh, from, from the airport. Uh, so Rocky Mountain College, uh, again, we're a small school, but we do offer a, a good experience and one that I, as, a, as, a, as an alum, uh, quite frankly, enjoyed. I, I ventured up from Southern California and I'm still here 12 years later. And it's for a number of the reasons you see here. So again, 98% placement rate of students graduating and getting jobs in their field. So because of, of our stature here in the, in the largest city, we're able to get students jobs when they need them and where they would like to get them. And we have connections to do that. A lot of our students are completing internships. It says 88%, which is obviously a statistic. I would argue that's actually 100%. So only two of our majors do not require students to take an internship. And that's gonna be our education program and our aviation program. So students in those programs are actually learning in their field while they're in school. So for instance, our education program, they're actually gonna be going into classroom starting their sophomore year here in the largest school district of the state and they're going to be teaching students from all different levels to get actual practical knowledge of teaching and then before they graduate they're well aware if they want to be in a classroom uh, with with those type of students our aviation program as i mentioned earlier we do own our own planes in a hangar just five minutes from campus where students will be flying and are assigned a flight slot every three days so you're actually going to be flying at least three days a week uh, and it's, it's, it's guaranteed that that will happen. So you'll graduate with a commercial pilot's license, uh, ready to go, ready to look for a job. You won't have to do any more flying after you graduate in order to get those licenses. Average class size of 14. So again, 1,000 students, it's not that hard to maintain uh, not only now physical distancing, but also just a, a, a more intimate experience. I know my senior year, I think my classes were no more than six or seven students, which was awesome to build relationships with my professors and just have conversations more than anything than being lectured at or talked to. 90% uh, placement in the medical school. So again, great, great way of preparing our students and getting them ready for uh, their experience in graduate school. Uh, more times than not, we've been voted best value uh, in Montana for what you're getting, uh, for what you're paying. So here at the college, we offer over 50 majors and 37 minors. So you're able to find a wide variety of, of, of interests that, will, that will, will resonate with you, whether it be geology, environmental science, uh, you know, math or, or business. So again, we have a lot of different opportunities for you to explore. Again, as a liberal arts institution, you will explore those, which will help you, again, become a more well-rounded well, well professional. We do offer uh, some pre-professional programs so students can explore things like occupational therapy. So we do have a doctorate of occupational therapy here. It's about two years old, uh, first one in the region. And also a pre-physicians uh, program, but also a physicians program here. Uh, and that's the, the picture of some gals there graduating, uh, one of the, the best ones in the region. So students are able to, to go on with that physician's assistance program. Transformational learning, again, because of our size, we're able to dedicate all of our energy and our resources into ensuring that you as the undergraduate student is getting that hands-on experience. So we don't have very many graduate students here, maybe about 60 or 70. So a lot of our attention, our efforts go into graduate or to undergraduate students. So all of our students are gonna be able to, to actually experience what they're learning and put into practical use well before they graduate, which I think is invaluable. Here in Billings, uh, we, we, we really pride ourselves in being outdoors. So not only uh, are we able to get to an airport and fly somewhere, but you can go down to Yellowstone National Park, or you can hit one of the many ski hills that are, are around our area pretty easily if you want to do that. Outdoor rec uh, office, 
rents out enough equipment, enough equipment to uh, outfit you from tip to head in camping gear and anything else, any activity you want to participate in free of charge to you to get involved. So someone like myself who had never been camping before, because I'm from obviously a large uh, city down in Southern California, uh, I was able to do that and participate without missing a beat. So I appreciate you guys joining. Uh, we do have some athletics here, uh, 17 different sports and consistently ranked nationally. And here is to leave you with this, our cost to win, to, of attendance this year. It's about $30,000 uh, and 39,000 for room and board. These are our real costs. There is no out of state tuition. So you're paying just as much as everyone else here on campus. I'll go ahead and skip forward. Uh, here is our information. If you'd like to get in touch with me again, my name is Sean Coleman. I appreciate you guys joining. Sean, thank you very much. And want to uh, ask each of our representatives to go ahead and uh, come back on camera and uh, turn on their microphones. And I might have muted one so uh, by mistake. So I want to make sure that everyone is unmuted, but can be. And um, just in the last about four minutes here, I'm going to do a quick q and I'm going to play talk show host, get a little more information. You can share a little bit about your campuses and we'll uh, We'll have you answer in the same order that you presented. So we'll start with the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. And the question is simply, it's a pretty easy one. It's what's your favorite campus or school tradition that you've experienced or seen? I would say probably um, one of the coolest traditions on campus at University of Minnesota Twin Cities is rubbing Goldie or Gopher's teeth at the statue. Um, it's good luck before a test, before a football game, before a hockey game. So um, you'll always see people go up to our mascot too and rub his teeth. We're big hardcore mascot fans for Goldie. So um, I highly encourage you Google him if you don't know who he is, but huge tradition at the U. Specifically the teeth. Interesting. Uh, Illinois, Chicago. Sure. So at USC, we typically have something called Spark in the Park. Um, so everybody from Travis Scott, Nick Jonas, Lupe Fiasco, it's a huge free celebrity filled concert that we have for students. So we're right in the heart of everything, entertainment, et cetera. So it's amazing to have the students come together with those events and like our 400 student clubs. It's just good camaraderie. Excellent. University of Utah. Well, I actually mentioned my favorite one during my presentation, but uh, it's the third down jump. So our mighty Utah student section, when that opponent is going for third down, we want to distract them. So they jump in unison and it really has been picked up by the seismograph machines over in engineering. Uh, and so it actually registers as a seismic event. Montana Western. Uh, so one of our um, coolest programs I think that we have here is the Pop Prince for Success, which um, has really grown to be one of the most popular things on campus. Um, it is a way to get our students involved. Um, our mascot is the Bulldogs. So anytime that our students participate in something on campus, whether it's going to an athletic or club event, studying in our tutoring center, or um, even just attending just random things that are happening, they earn paw prints. And at the end of each um, semester, they get to go to this auction and bid on items like TVs, gaming systems, laptops, $500 scholarships, things like that. And they can win these really cool prizes without actually paying, they don't have to pay any money. So it's just their time they're putting in. It really rewards our students in getting involved. And it's been um, definitely a, a great thing for our campus. Sounds like an incentive. Uh, Loyola, Chicago. My favorite tradition is probably our senior, our, our, sorry, our um, finals breakfast. So the finals breakfast, although it sounds like it would be something that we hold in the morning, we hold it at midnight. And the thing I really like about it is our faculty and staff are actually the ones who are serving all of our students this meal. And it's really meant to lift morale. And it's definitely also goes along with our Jesuit roots of, of service. And I really like the idea that our faculty and our staff really get their hands into that and, you know, give students a break. It really, it's, it's just a great time for all the students to come together and and take a break from that really busy time of finals week and you can't do an all-nighter on an empty stomach so it's Definitely very valuable in that, in that regard too Thanks. and rocky mountain college yeah uh here at the college we do a thing called a candlelight dinner so uh, there's a room on campus that was the first cafeteria back in 1878 uh still stands today it's actually above me 
uh, and we actually hold a, a candlelight dinner because that's how they had dinner back then every year in February uh, for all of our seniors. So it's a great experience to be back in that room and just have that one last dinner in there. Fantastic. Well, thanks to each of you for uh, not only sharing your uh, favorite campus and school traditions, but also for, for sharing great information about each of your schools in uh, tonight's session. And I want to thank all of you for joining us for these presentations. When you close your window, you will get a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. Be sure to sign up for additional ones where you signed up for this one. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings. Again, same place you signed up for this session tonight. Again, thank you to all of our representatives from the six schools that presented tonight. And thank you for joining us. Have a good rest of your Tuesday evening. Take care. <laughs>